Hello, everybody. So we're going to do 2.8 cell respiration. Um, there are two more uh, little topics in topic two, uh, 2.8, which is this, cell respiration, and 2.9, which is photosynthesis. Uh, assessment statements, not a ton. Um, always nice when you hear that. So in 2.8, we're going to need a definition for cell respiration. We're going to talk about this process called glycolysis right here. Um, we're going to talk about two types of cell respiration. We're going to talk about anaerobic, which is without oxygen, anaerobic, which is with. We're going to talk about how anaerobic respiration, um, we can use it in yeast to make bread and also make some alcohol and drinks and stuff that have alcohol in it. Um, talk about the production of lactate. And then down here at the end, which you can't see here, is just um, some little experiments you can do to measure cell respiration. Okay, let's get into the nitty gritty. So we need to define cell respiration. I'm going to skip this first slide. I'm going to work from this diagram here. So the definition of um, cell respiration is the controlled... Re whoops. Oh, no. What did I do? The controlled release of um, energy in the form of ATP from organic compounds. Now, if you noticed, I have things underlined here. And remember, whenever you see them underlined, it means that you need to include them in your definition. Also, when you see this word define, it's one of those definitions that you need to memorize. So it could end up on the exam. So let's talk about this real quick. So let's talk about ATP first, because that's the unit of energy that we use in living things, right? And eukaryotic and, and uh, um, prokaryotic organisms. Um, so ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. And here, the triphosphate is this, one, two, three molecules of phosphate. Now, the energy is actually located between phosphate number two and phosphate number three. So it's right here. So basically, cell respiration is adding a phosphate onto adenosine di, di stands for two, adenosine diphosphate. So that's what this process is. So making ATP by adding phosphates on here, and then we can release them when we want by breaking these bonds. And we use organic compounds. <clears throat> and for us, we're going to be talking about mainly this one. And this, of course, is glucose, right? You should remember that way back from biochemistry. So that's our definition. Need to remember it. Let's talk about the first step of um, uh, the first step that needs to happen before we can begin our two types of respiration, and that is called glycolysis. So state that in cell respiration, glucose first needs to be broken down in the cytoplasm by a process called glycolysis. Glyco means sugar, lysis means break. So we're breaking our sugar, and we break it. We break it into pyruvate, actually two molecules of pyruvate, and we make a small yield or a little amount of ATP. So let's look at this. So let's pretend that um, in your bloodstream you have glucose traveling because you had a meal and it passed through the walls of your digestive system, and here's your molecule of glucose. Glucose will pass through the walls of your um, cell, so across the cell membrane, and it's going to be broken down into two molecules of pyruvate. So if you notice, pyruvate here is one, two, three carbon molecules. One, two, three carbon molecules for a total of six, which is this, right? So when this happens, we make a little bit of ATP. So it, we actually make two molecules. And it's a little complex, like what happens, but we don't need to know that in the SL stuff. But in the end, we make two molecules of ATP, which is a small amount. The other thing they want you to know here is that it occurs in the cytoplasm. And you're like, wait a minute, what? So cell respiration does occur only in the cytoplasm. But, which we'll talk about later, if there's oxygen present, this pyruvate molecule will enter the mitochondria and then we can make lots of ATP. So that's aerobic respiration. But for this first step, of glycolysis. It occurs in the cytoplasm. We break our glucose molecule into two molecules of pyruvate. Um, and in the end, the product is a little bit of ATP.